Hi my dear students and my dear colleagues today i am going to begin act 1 scene 3 and i request all my dear students and all my dear colleagues to open the textbook of julius caesar and come to act uh, first act and c3 and in my earlier earlier videos i have uh, told you that the ancient romans and the 16th century shakespearean audiences had strong belief in superstitious beliefs or superstitions and supernatural elements supernatural elements are those sights those scenes which we normally don't see on this earth and a supernatural sight could be a ghost it could be an unnatural sight take for example we believe that an owl is a bird of night an owl is called a nocturnal creature a nocturnal bird and we expect an owl only to come out in the nights and start hooting and shrieking even in india we have this superstitious belief of this unnatural sight the unnatural sight i am talking about is regarding the uh, the owl supposing the owl even in tumkur or even in our country an owl supposing it appears during day time and starts hooting and shrieking we say it is a bad omen something bad is going to happen to some person when an owl appears during the day time and starts hooting and shrieking the same is the case with a comet you know c o m e t if a comet is seen we believe that some great man is going to die even this is a superstitious belief so who is free from superstitious beliefs tell me my dear friends everyone has some superstitious belief but what i would like to tell you is there should be a limit for everything we shouldn't go beyond a certain limit to have these superstitious beliefs okay and believe in uh, you know uh, unnatural sights and all these superstitious beliefs and unnatural sights we are going to witness them in scene 3 act 1 and these are witnessed none by none other than our casca our casca has many superstitious fears you know he is scared of unnatural sights he is scared of superstitious sights and happenings and his superstitious beliefs and fears are very cleverly used by our cunning and epicurean cassius and cassius changes that superstitious casca into becoming a conspirator against brutus now when the third scene opens in act 1 there is a huge storm strong winds are blowing lightning is striking the earth and there is a disturbance in nature as it were and it is night and people are terribly scared of these disturbances that they find in nature that in other words we call 
nature's fury and given this situation we find casca meeting an elderly senator called cicero cicero is an old man and mind you cicero doesn't believe in the superstitious beliefs is very practical like cassius but whereas casca strongly believes in the superstitious beliefs and he thinks that perhaps there is a civil war in heaven because of the civil war in heaven there is a disturbance in the nature on earth and casca also says that perhaps people are misbehaving with gods and goddesses and people's misbehavior perhaps has made gods angry with the people and thereby gods are sending these unnatural sights and superstitious happenings to destroy the world as it were and all these things we find in casca's words when he speaks to cicero let's open the textbook let's go to act 1 scene 3 now it is rome a street thunder and lightning enter from opposite sides casca with his sword drawn he has taken out his sword because he is scared of these superstitious happenings and unnatural sights he has seen and also there is cicero now cicero wishes greets casca and there is a conversation between cicero and casca and let us see what they talk and what they talk about cicero wants to know whether caesar has gone home he wants casca to answer this question because casca was with caesar antony when caesar was going home after witnessing uh, the sport activities during the festival of lupercal look at this good evening casca brought you caesar home he wants to know whether caesar has gone home but cicero is shocked to find casca breathless casca is breathless because casca is worried and is you know looking around because this nature's fury has troubled him a lot casca is shaken to the core when he when he has witnessed this nature's anger fury you know and when cicero observes notices casca shivering and shaking in fear cicero asks him why are you breathless and why are you staring so much because casca is breathless and casca is staring around with his sword drawn drawn you know he's just looking around then casca replies Oh Cicero, are you not moved? Are you not scared? I'll read out the entire speech. Carefully follow that, and then I'll explain each and every line to you. Are you not moved when all the sway of earth shakes like a thing unformed? Oh Cicero, I've seen tempests when the scolding wind have raved the knotty oaks. and i've seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exalted with the threatening clouds but never till tonight never till now did i go through a tempest dropping fire oh either there is a civil strife in heaven or else the world too saucy with the gods incenses them to send destruction these are the sounds you have here heard just now perhaps or a 
symbol of nature's fury. Look at this. Casca, this is what Casca says. Are you not moved? He's asking Cicero. Are you not shaken? Are you not scared? When, when all the sway of earth, when the entire creation, God's creation, that is the whatever you find on earth, is shaking as if to fall down. Casca says that he feels there is an earthquake because the winds are blowing so strongly and it's raining heavily, you know, and there is lightning striking the earth and all these things are put fear in Casca and Casca instead of believing that they are all natural happenings he attaches these, this, this superstition to all these natural happenings. Because Casca is highly, Casca is highly superstitious. Let me tell you, my dear friends. Are you not moved when all the sway of earth, whatever is created on this earth, everything is shaking like an unfirm thing. Like a thing that, that, that doesn't have proper foundation. Like a thing that is very loose. You know what falls down? A thing that doesn't have a strong base falls down. And here Casca says that all the sway of earth, all that is that, that you find on earth is shaking like a thing unfirmed. Nothing he finds firm on this earth. Everything is shaking and everything is about to fall down. That's what Casca says here. And he is asking Cicero why he is not shaken by these, you know, these shaking things on earth. And Casca says, oh Cicero, I have seen tempests. He says he has already seen tempests that have, you know, destroyed or uprooted even strongest trees like oak trees. He says he has seen them and he is not worried about such things. And he, has, he says he has even seen the ocean raging and fretting and foaming and rising high and almost touching the sky that is filled with the dark clouds. Even that he has experienced. He says he has seen the tempest destroying strong trees. He has seen the ocean swelling and almost touching the, 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 the cloudy skies. But he's, he talks about a different thing here. He says he has never ever seen till that night you know the sky or the tempests dropping fire what is tempest dropping fire my friends it is again a natural phenomenon when a lightning strikes the earth you find as if fire is being dropped from the skies onto the earth and since Casca is highly superstitious, he says that the fire is falling on earth because of a civil war in heaven between gods and demons or perhaps gods are angry with the misbehavior of human beings on the earth and they are sending these, they are dropping this fire to destroy the earth because People's misbehavior has angered the gods. Angered the gods. Don't, don't you think these are all superstitious beliefs, my dear friends? Look at this. Casca says, I have seen tempests. Where when tempests occurred, he says he has seen them where in the scolding winds. Winds that are you know, blowing and howling. That howling sound of the winds 
is compared to winds that are scolding. How can a wind scold? Only a human being can scold. And here, Shakespeare uses the figure of speech personification, you know. Personification is a figure of speech wherein lifeless things are given life and lifeless things are made to, you know, act like things that have life. And this figure of speech is called personification. For example, we, you, uh, we, we say this angry river, angry flood. How could the river be angry? How could the flood be angry? There is another personification, example of a personification is murmuring rose. How can a rose murmur? Only people murmur. M-U-R-M-U-R. -M -M -U they, so people murmur and not a rose. Look at this. Oh, Cicero, this is what Casca says. I've seen tempests when the scolding winds have rived the naughty oaks. Oak tree is a very strong tree whose roots are deep down the earth. You know, they are called naughty oaks. Naughty oaks are oak trees with very strong roots inside. Even such strong rooted oak trees are rived. Rived means, you know, broken apart, thrown apart, uprooted, you know, as it were. He says he has seen those things. I have seen tempests when the scolding winds have right, the naughty oaks, and he also says he has seen the ambitious ocean. Once again, he uses personification in Shakespeare. How could the ocean be ambitious? A human being can be ambitious, not an ocean. And here Casca uses the adjective ambitious to the noun ocean because ocean, there are whirlwinds in ocean and ocean is terribly disturbed because of the storm, you know, that, that is sweeping across the ocean. He says, I have seen ambitious ocean swell, rising high and raging, you no know, rage and foam. Rage gives us the meaning of expressing one's anger. And here once again you have this personification being used. He says, I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be touching the threatening clouds, to be exalted, to, to, to swell high and high and go and reach the skies. The threatening skies. Do you know when the skies are threatening only when there are dark clouds, you know, enveloping the sky, the blue sky. And then the skies appear threatening. They appear as if they are going to be strong, you know, rains, heavy rains. Look at Casca, he says, O Cicero, I have seen tempests. When the scolding winds have rived the naughty oaks, I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exalted, to raise up to the skies and touching the skies, to be exalted with the threatening clouds. I have seen a tempest doing such things. I have seen an ocean doing such deadly things. But here he talks about a different thing. But never till now. Oh Cicero, but never till now. Never till tonight. Never till now did I go through. Did I see a tempest dropping fire. Till now I have not seen these storms and strong winds dropping fire from heavens. From the skies. The skies are spitting fire on the face of the earth. 
But never till tonight, never till now did I go through a tempest dropping fire. So when the skies are dropping fire, Casca becomes superstitious here. And he gives his own reason for the fire being dropped on earth. He says, Ah, oh, either there is a civil strife in heaven. These are superstitious fears of Casca, dear friends. Either there is a civil, there could be one of these two reasons why the skies are dropping fire onto the earth. The first reason could be there is a civil strife in heaven. There could be a civil war in heaven between gods and fallen angels, you know, demons as it were. Perhaps that war, civil war, has cast these fire being dropped onto the earth. Or else, or if that is not the case, or else the world. The world here means people. He's talking about the people in Rome could be. Or else the world too saucy with the gods. The world, the people are saucy with the gods. The people are perhaps ill mannerly with the gods. Perhaps the people are you know, uh, misbehaving with gods by not respecting gods. Whereas the people are disrespectful to gods. That perhaps might have angered gods and it is because of that anger of the gods that we find these, you know, uh, fires being dropped on the face of the earth. Either there is a civil strife in heaven or else the world too saucy with the gods incenses them, making them angry. The disrespect of people to gods is making gods angry, incenses them to send such destruction to earth. Destruction by way of dropping fire from the skies. These are all superstitious fears. And look, look at how Cicero responds to Casca's superstitious fears. Cicero asks him, why, why, why the hell, my dear Casca, are you so scared and so shaky? Why, saw you anything more wonderful? This is what he is asking Cicero. Did you see any more wonderful things. He's asking Casca whether he had seen. Wonderful things means unnatural sights and sights that might have put a lot of fears in Casca. Why saw you anything more wonderful? Then Casca talks about the natural sights he had seen, I mean, the unnatural sights, I'm sorry, the unnatural sights he had seen. Casca says, yes, Cicero, I have seen more wonderful things and let me enlist those more wonderful things I had seen, he says. He says, Casca, a common slave, I'll read out the entire passage, you closely follow the passage all the lines and then I'll explain, interpret every line, uh, you know, very easily to be understood by you. Casca says, a common slave, you know him well by sight. That common slave held up his left hand, which did flame and burn like 20 torches joined. Yet his hand, not sensible of fire, remained unscorched. Besides, I have not since put up my sword against the capital, I met a lion. A lion who glared upon me, but went surly by without annoying me. And there were drawn upon a heap a hundred ghastly women, transformed with fear, who swore they saw men all in fire walk up and down the streets of Rome. And yesterday, 
The bird of night did sit even at noonday upon the market place hooting and shrieking. And when these prodigies do go so conjointly meet, let not men say, these are the reasons they are natural. For I believe they are portentous things unto the climate that they are planting upon, my dear friend Cicero. These are the natural sights I have seen. And these sights have put a lot of fear in me. And these sights are prophesying or predicting some danger to our country, Rome. That is what Casca wants to say. Now I will explain every unnatural sight seen by Casca. Okay. He first talks about a slave, common slave, whom even Cicero knows very well, he says. A common slave, you know him well by sight. That's what Casca says. I am beginning, I am, I am, I am starting from Casca's speech here, from the first line, okay. A common slave, you know him well by sight. And this common slave held up his left hand. He had held up his left hand and that left hand did flame and burn. And his left hand was burning, flaming and burning like 20 torches joined. That left hand was burning and flaming and it was giving so much light as if 20 torches were put together and they were burning the left hand of the common slave. When his left hand was so much burning and so much giving off flame, should he not scream in pain? It must be burning and scorching and paining him a lot. It must have pained him a lot. He must have screamed in pain, but Surprisingly, the slave remained unscorched. He was just lifting his hand like this and he was just standing like this. Though the hand was flaming and burning, it did not pain him at all. Yet his hand, not sensible of fire, his hand became insensitive of the fire. And so it remained unscorched. His hand remained unhurt as it were. As it were. Is it not an unnatural sight, my dear friends? And then he talks about one another unnatural sight seen by Casca. He says, besides, in addition to this unnatural sight, I have not seen put up my sword. I have still drawn, I had still drawn my sword. I was moving around. And I came to the capital, against in right in front of the capital. Capital is one of the seven hills in ancient Rome, and there is a temple on this hill which is dedicated to their god Jupiter. And mind you, all these political activities used to take place in that capital, you know. C-A-P-I, it's not C-A-P-I-T-A-L, it is C-A-P-I-T-O-L. A temple on that first hill, among the seven hills, a temple being built, and the temple was dedicated to the god Jupiter. And Casca says, I have not seen put up my sword against the capital, right in front of that capital. Capital, I met a lion. Let me tell you one thing. A lion is a wild beast. And it is natural for a lion to attack a person to defend itself. You know, If it comes across a human being, out of fear, the lion attacks a human being or if the lion is hungry it would attack an animate thing you know any, any anything which has life and kills it and you know 
takes it away as its food. But here something else happened, something opposite happened. He says, against the Capitol, I met a lion who glared upon me. The lion glared at him. The lion looked at Casca very ferociously and he did not attack him. Without attacking, it went surly by. It went very, very arrogantly, it went away. By glaring at Casca with its fiery eyes, he just went away arrogantly without troubling him or attacking him. This, Casca says, is unnatural. Perhaps the lion was not hungry. You know, perhaps the lion's stomach is full. And perhaps the lion, it, uh, perhaps because of this reason, the lion did not, you know, attack Casca. But Casca gives a different meaning. He says, it is unnatural. Against the capital, I met a lion who glared upon me and went slowly by without annoying me. Annoying means troubling or disturbing or attacking. That is the second unnatural thing he speaks about. Casca. He's speaking all these things, narrating all these things to Cicero. And then he says, They were drawn upon a heap, a hundred costly women. And then he saw one hundred women in a heap. In a crowd, these 100 women perhaps fell upon one another and they were, you know, transformed in fear because they were shaking, they were fearful, they were, they, they were scared of something, you know. He says, upon a heap, they were drawn a hundred ghastly women. Women who were looking very pale and who were looking like ghosts because of that fear. They were drawn upon a heap, a hundred ghostly women transformed with their fear. These women had completely been changed into looking like ghosts because of that terrible fear they had. And these shaking women, trembling women, quivering women, they swore, they promised to Casca and told him the reason why they were so fearful. They swore, what did they see? They saw men all in fire. They saw some men completely in fire. They, all these men were burning and they were not screaming and shouting in pain. All these men were burning, they were flaming and they were slightly, you know, silently without making any noise. They were walking up and down the streets of Rome like these gliding ghosts, you know. These ghosts who, you know, who glide, who uh, float in the air without making noise. Ghosts don't make noise. Devils make noise. You know. That's why we say an empty mind is a devil's workshop. A devil screams whereas a ghost doesn't. So Casca says they were drawn upon a heap a hundred ghastly women transformed with their fear who swore they saw. They told me, they promised me they saw. What? They saw men all in fire, walking, just walking up and down the streets of Rome without complaining, without shouting, without screaming in pain. And then he talks about one more natural sight. He says, and yesterday, only yesterday, the bird of night, he's talking about the owl, O-W-E-L. He says, yesterday, the bird of night did sit even at noonday. The bird, instead of appearing in the night, 
it sat upon the noon day it sat at noon day when it was when it was 12 o'clock in the morning at noon he says yesterday the bird of night did sit even at noon day where upon the market place where people there, there would be a hustle bustle of people and upon the market place at noon day this owl which is supposed to appear only in the night appeared during day time at noon day it sat upon the market place and it was hooting and shrieking it was making all sorts of sounds and noises this is another a natural sight he is talking about then he says when these prodigies look at the next line when these unnatural sights when these prodigies do so conjointly meet when these unnatural sights happen at the same time at the same place conjointly meeting means happening at the same time at the same place when these prodigies and natural sights do so conjointly meet let not men say they are natural they are not natural let not men say these are the reasons let not men say these things you so he says these are their reasons they are natural when these prodigies do so conjointly meet let not men say these are their reasons they are natural because i believe they are not natural and these are appearing without reason they don't have any reason at all they are appearing and the only reason is that some danger is going to happen to our country our country has to wait for some danger in the near future for i believe they are portentous things they are prophetic things they are talking about what is going to happen in future to our country they are the portentous things unto this climate they are pointing upon these are all pointing upon the climate is our country whatever a natural sight is seen is seen only in rome and so these are a prediction to our country that there is some untoward happening that is going to happen untoward incident that is going to happen to our country some danger is awaited for our country then cicero says look i'll read out what cicero says or shall i read out casco's speech once again for your benefit okay you just follow casco's speech he says a common slave you know him well by sight held up his left hand which did flame and burn like 20 torches joined yet his hand not sensible of fire remained unscorched besides i am not since put up my sword against the capitol i met a lion who glared upon me and went surly by without annoying me and they were drawn upon a heap hundred ghastly women transformed with fear who swore they saw men all in fire walk up and down the streets and yesterday the bird of night did sit even at noon day upon the market place hooting and shrieking and when these prodigies do so conjointly meet let not let not men say ah oh, these are the reasons they are natural for i believe they are portentous things unto the climate they are pointing upon to which cicero responds let me read out what cicero has to say here cicero says indeed it is a strange disposed time but men may construe things after their fashion clean from the purpose of the things themselves he's 
Cicero is not interested in whatever Casca is saying. Cicero is interested in two things. Cicero wants to know whether Caesar has gone home. And Cicero wants to know whether Caesar is going to the capital the following day, the next morning. Only these two things Cicero wants to know. Because Cicero doesn't believe in these superstitions. That's why Cicero says, it is a strange disposed time. He says, it's, a, it's the time where strange things are happening. It's okay. But men may construe things and people can interpret, can explain these things after their own fashion. In their own way, they are free to explain things. Clean from the purpose of the things themselves. Because a thing happens naturally and people describe it as unnatural. It is up to them, Cicero says, because Cicero doesn't believe in these things. And Cicero asks the final question. This is what Cicero is interested in. He says, comes Caesar to the capital tomorrow? Is Caesar coming to the Senate capital tomorrow? Is the question put by Cicero. Then Casca says, he doth. He doth for he did bid Antonius send word to you he would be there tomorrow. He was telling, I saw Caesar putting a word across to Antony to inform you that he is going to come to the capital tomorrow. Casca says, he doth, for he did bid Antonia send word to you, send a word to you, he would be there tomorrow. Then Cicero now has come to know that Caesar is coming to the capital the next day. Now Cicero doesn't want to waste time speaking to this superstitious Casca. So Cicero says, good night then Casca. This disturbed sky is not to walk in. Okay, please don't walk in the disturbed sky. Because there is a storm, there are heavy rains, lightning is striking and it's not proper on the part of people to come out into the open when there is nature's fury. Hence Cicero says, this disturbed night is not to walk in. Then Casca says, farewell Cicero. So Cicero goes away and Casca goes in a different direction. Casca goes in one way and Cicero goes in the opposite way. And now Casca is terribly moved and perhaps Cassius is also the, he was also there overhearing the conversation between Cicero and Casca. And so Casca slowly, sorry, Cassius slowly follows Casca because he wants to trap Casca into becoming a conspirator against Caesar. And now there is a conversation between Casca and Cicero and sorry Casca and Cassius and we'll talk about it in my next video.